How's it going everybody? We are Cranky Films and today we have for you a video from Tier Zoo. Yup. Yeah, checking out Tier Zoo, really popular creator, I know that. And today we are going to be watching the insect tier list. Which is actually okay? interesting because insects are crazy. They are crazy, bro. They're so small, bro. They're okay. ugly too, bro. They're wild. They're, they have the unique features. We'll call them ugly. They really do. They, they are do. pretty damn ugly though. <laughs> They're brutal. They're damn brutal. Yes, they are. They're right. always brutal. You guys ready to get into it? Yeah, I'm ready, yes. bro. I'm ready, bro. Alright, let's see, let's see. Play of the game. Jack oh Jumper Ants. Got some Overwatch action going here. Oh my god. Oh. Oh, is this the ant that explodes? Really? Insects are one of the most broken factions the game has ever seen. Nowhere else in nature will you find such an incredible concentration of abilities that are not only overpowered, but also extremely oh. unique. It's oh, tough to even you, know where to start when talking about what makes insects such a successful group. Because in a lot of cases, it's not just that their individual oh, yeah, some abilities are battles. overpowered, but some of them feel like they should be mutually exclusive, since they're just insanely OP when used in combination with one another. You'll see what I mean once I get into the tier list, but first, a brief overview of the insect faction's general attributes and history. Hmm. Insects were added to the game during the early Carboniferous expansion. The devs bumped up the atmospheric oxygen level, Love which allowed members of the arthropod oh, faction yeah. to adopt larger sizes and more costly That's a nice abilities. Dark Souls overlays. And while most of the arthropod player base was trying to dominate the land by leveling up their size, a small offshoot of the crustacean player base opted to forego the gigantism trait and instead used Ew. this oxygen bonus to unlock an ability never before seen in game. Flight. Because these new creatures were the very first to gain the ability to fly, the air became entirely their Yoink. domain for the time being, Yoink. and would remain that way Yoink. until reptiles unlocked the ability several expansions later. Insects are extremely diverse in their abilities and stat spreads. Oh, poor, poor in fact, oh, they're so like diverse that it's impossible to include them all in a single video. Uh, I'll be keeping things fairly generalized, but truth oh, be told, blue. many of the groups I'll be discussing uh, today blue. have so many standard members that, that they could easily be an entire tier list in and of themselves. So it's a little tough to pin down their general attributes, but there are a few commonalities. Being members of the Arthropod faction, all insects are granted the exoskeletal armor perk which greatly raises their AC compared to soft-bodied builds of similar sizes, with the only downside being a massive reduction in those same defensive stats for a short time every time the player oh, levels yeah. up. This makes insects quite tanky on average, allowing them to excel in combat. Ouch. The insect build oh. also has oh. access oh. to the compound oh eyes perk, which grants them vastly improved awareness compared to other arthropods like scorpions and centipedes. With 360-degree vision, their ability to avoid obstacles, dodge attacks, and pursue targets while flying is far superior to most other flyers. That's a fucking frog, dude. Because poor, insects poor, tend to have naturally high stealth. So, so in order to compete with other insect builds, acute vision is required. We've only just scratched the surface of the insane abilities insects have access to, though. For a more in-depth look, let's get into the tier list. I, I, okay. At the bottom of the tier list, we have the silverfish. The silverfish is the most primitive insect build still in existence. It kind of blurs the line between what is and is not. What? They're not a Minecraft exclusive. <laughs> Unlike other oh flightless insects, which decided to respec and drop the flight ability in favor of more refined strategies, the silverfish build actually never had access to it in the first place. Aside from having an exoskeleton, they don't really have any of the abilities that make insects powerful. Oh, an they do not have oh. wings and have essentially no combat abilities. They have fairly low defenses and get bodied left and right by pretty much everything, so with bad. their only useful stat being their decently high movement speed. Their special ability allows them to gain XP blocks. from eating cellulose and lignin, meaning they can farm XP from wooden structures, which normally don't grant any experience. Okay. This ability would be fairly powerful in forest biomes, but because they're such weak <laughs> they're bats, like, what they the hell is that? actually <laughs> stick to urban areas, it's feeding mine. on things like paper and cloth, <laughs> in the relative hello, safety what? of houses, apartments, and office spaces. Nom. Even there, they aren't completely safe though. And while no build is ever truly safe in the insect meta, the silverfish's extreme lack of useful abilities oh, plays it firmly in F tier. That's honestly and the only F insect F build I believe right? deserves an F tier oh ranking. God. Most insects are quite viable, Rip. and even the less viable ones tend to have at least a few useful things going for them, even if those things aren't necessarily broken. 
First in D tier, okay. we have the Phasmid build, which includes walking sticks and leaf mimics. These builds sport what are unquestionably some of the most impressive camouflage abilities in the entire game, second only to color changing builds like the Octopus and Chameleon. As impressive yeah, as these are, though, the, the octopuses are fucking crazy. They're crazy, yeah. man. They are they cool. Dude, anything in the oceans is crazy. The camouflage to me is one of the most craziest things, man. Oh, yeah. It's the one so is... wild, dude. It's so... Dude, if we had camouflage, that'd be, that'd be broken. It'd be broken, dude. Humans, <laughs> well, humans are already broken, right? But that's only humans in pack and <laughs> tools. The question I constantly end up asking is, is this really necessary? Because with the exception of insects, which deliberately lower their stealth as part of the aposematic coloration strategy, insects as a whole already have an above average stealth and are usually able to maintain this while still specking into other equally impressive abilities. Their camouflage can only take them so far. While they're near undetectable while remaining the motionless, that? walking my, sticks my still man, need to move to find to food. Grab a stick. And while they <laughs> mimic the movement of a swaying leaf or branch, this That's certainly isn't stick. perfect. In fact, if they're ever caught in an environment it's where a stick bug. doesn't match as well, yeah. their instincts yeah, no, 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 no. to and move can actually end up their position away even more, rather than aiding in their attempts to hide. Some phasmids oh, do possess incredible <laughs> defenses, no, but dancing. as we'll see further up the tier list, this that. attack is quite mild compared to the heat some other insects are packing. Phasmids have a similar game plan to sloths, complete with all the major flaws this strategy is riddled with. <laughs> Although at least Phasmids don't completely forego all common sense and make a dangerous trek to the forest floor once a week just to poop. Huh. Next in D tier, we have the Lepidopterans, the faction which includes moths, butterflies, and skippers. They're at first tier. glance, these may seem like absolute bottom tier builds. They're among the most vulnerable builds in the game when it comes to combat, Feels with extremely bad. squishy defensive stats and utterly abysmal offensive abilities. Many of the larval forms of these builds are 100% defenseless and have yep, a mobility dead. stat in the single digits, literally oh. the freest kills in the game. However, the Lepid player base is quite crafty and has come up with a few ways of at least sort of mitigating their many weaknesses. Caterpillars and adult Lepids alike can adopt quite convincing disguises, some designed to help them blend in, and some That's designed wild. to intimidate. Oh. Granted, these strategies oh, often ah. don't hold up against <laughs> high <-tiny laughs> heads, but it I does help. Oh, gross. Some caterpillars spec into quite potent defenses, like spines and toxins, which make them simply not worth the potential damage to take on. And credit where credit is due, even though they still are fairly defenseless, butterflies and moths do have excellent mobility, and can fly much greater distances than most insect builds. This enables them to avoid high conflict areas <laughs> of the map, and reach higher quality loot Search. that might be too rare for most players up. to rely on. Their massive wings, in addition to being highly customizable Ooh, for a variety yeah, of stealth or intimidation purposes, also just make them look much larger than insects Ooh. of comparable body sizes, which helps dissuade attacks. But ultimately, leopards still take plenty of L's, and most high-tier insect builds have quite oppressive matchups against them, so they're definitely no. a below-average faction. Collab. That's actually it for D tier, and I know it might seem like we're moving up the tier list quickly, but again, insects are a massively successful faction and I are going to be concentrated be in the higher tiers. Cockroach. At the bottom of C tier, oh, we have the Cockroach. Bio hey, Rock. Cockroach is the ultimate you. survivor, I which opted that. to spec into mobility, that stealth, and a multitude of elemental resistances spider. in lieu of any offensive abilities. While they don't pack much heat, their flat shape allows them to easily wedge themselves into locations that are extremely difficult for other players to attack them in. They're rather clumsy flyers, but they do have an above flyers? average ground movement speed, Darn enabling right them to quickly flyers. scurry to cover Crashing if they see a predator player approaching. Out. However, when if caught I in the open, oh I would freak out if Harker they're fairly helpless me. and easily one of the most vulnerable builds in the entire yeah, exact faction. The they're also somewhat oh. carried by human mains, making temperate and tundra servers viable for them. Because really, as impressive as their toxin by and radiation mains. resistance abilities are, they're quite vulnerable to the cold, and would still be mostly confined to jungle servers if not for humans oh, with the fire control ability. Thank god. Oof. The biggest variants may be able to tank one or two hits, but even then, with no way to fight back, they're still pretty screwed if they fail to outright escape a fight. Ear Next ear in C2, oh, we have the Earwig, a fearsome looking I call them pinchers. Build, which appears to have a oh, giant yeah. pair of mandibles on its rear end, called I call Cersei. Them as fearsome as these Cersei forceps are, if we actually check the Earwig's base stats, we quickly notice that, just like all of its other stats, its power stat is actually quite mediocre. 
As menacing as the Cersei are, the actual piercing damage they can deal is fairly minimal, and can even be deflected by the most basic of armor. <laughs> and even against builds without armor, the damage is so low that larger builds still don't really need to be wary of approaching the ear. But I just clap can them. Without restraint. It's like mine. Still, just because they can doesn't mean they do, as the Ewig's intimidation factor alone is oftentimes enough to protect it from conflict. What do pincher bugs even and do? Credit where credit is due, they don't the scare four me. sets are actually fairly decent they in pinch. matchups against soft bodied insects, and allow the Earwig to carry their targets much better than they could with their jaws. And while it may seem his arm. have opted for rear facing <laughs> weapons instead of the more typical forward facing ones like mandibles and rostrums, the position does actually serve a purpose in that it allows earwigs far greater access to burrows and tight spaces where they can hide out and avoid conflict altogether. Of all of the weapons insects have access to, so Cersei sad. might be some of the most unorthodox, Damn. which probably contributes to its ability to intimidate other players. However, I think to get out of mid tier, earwigs need to actually have the ability to back up their threat That's display. Bugs. They would do well to spend into some sort of venom. Fighting each other? Stings are a fairly common attribute for insects, Ew. so this feels like a bit of a missed opportunity. So, while certainly a viable mid tier, don't overestimate this build's abilities. Okay, At crickets. the top of C tier, we've got the Orthopterans, including Grasshoppers, Crickets, and Katydids. These are the first mobility centric builds on our list. While they're quite capable flyers, their true power comes from their saltatorial Dude, hind legs bro, rather the than their wings. Is, is in every Flight one of these is an examples. excellent defensive ability, yeah. you know that's gonna be as an it allows the user to get out of reach yeah, yeah. when attacks. Yeah, yeah. Gosh, is but this nutty. utility is lessened if their ability to get airborne has too much oh, startup so lag. And so Ooh. instead of using their wings to get themselves up Could into the air, a powerful jump enables the Orthopteran mains to escape well. vertically oh, and instant speed. Like, their damn. excellent vision makes it extremely difficult to get within striking range without alerting them. And because because their jump has such excellent frame data, landing an ambush strike on an orthopteran can Imagine feel near impossible there? at times. Okay. And even if a player does manage to secure a grab, like, their dude, powerful F hind this legs guy. can function as quite an effective what combo for them. The spines on their legs augments the damage their kicks can deal, meaning that if a grasshopper can tank the first few hits of an ambush attack, they may be able to turn the tide of a confrontation and escape after dealing serious damage to the attacker. With that said, Ooh, I think there are eye. a few flaws in their strategy, which I think keeps them out of the upper tiers. Grasshoppers can jump so far that there's really no way of knowing what sort of situation they're about to put themselves in. In a similar manner uh, to the flying fish, using such a <laughs> oh, can dude, sometimes be in a fuck. worse position than you were before. Especially if your local meta has a lot of spider players, <laughs> and although they do present a challenge, most predator players aren't disrupted by the grasshopper's kicks, and can either tank the damage outright or one-hit the grasshopper before it even has a chance to retaliate. Feels bad. Please? Uh, sure. At the bottom of B tier, we Let's have go. the Hemipterans. A diverse oh. order of insects with a few things in common, including generally having high defense and being somewhat shield shaped. However, the mm. most notable thing is that rather than slicing or pinching mouth parts, the Hemiptera build opts for a piercing rostrum, perfect for puncturing through tough surfaces. For the majority of Hemipteran builds, this allows them to farm XP from sources that are normally hard to access, like the energy dense sap inside trees and stems, or the starch inside of seeds. However, there are oh, some Hemipterans which use their sharp rostrum to deliver a venomous bite that is able to pierce through armored targets. Their venom okay. is powerful enough to one-shot just about any other insect, and can even deal severe damage to larger builds. The only major shortcoming here is that these so-called assassin bugs tend to actually have fairly low stealth, opting for the aposomatic intimidation defense I mentioned earlier. And on top of all that, they have fairly low mobility making actually ambushing another player kind of difficult if they're actually paying enough attention to simply dodge the attack. <laughs> oh, oh, Some do break this trend though, and oh, God. for both better camouflage and Dude. high aquatic mobility, that was massive. making them some of the most fearsome yeah. aquatic builds in the game. Uh, what is that? On the herbivore the side of things, of nipturns tend to fare a bit worse. They usually oh, still have fairly really low tiny. mobility and low stealth, and their defenses may be higher than the average, but are nowhere near as impactful as some of the builds higher on this list. Butt, they tend like, to shoot. rely on a chemical defense similar to some phasmids, which is where they get the name the stink bugs loses. from. However, similar to phasmids, these defenses also tend to be a bit lacking. The trap yeah. oh, fighters are wild, dude. So certainly a group with some standout members and fine for XP farming, but still nothing too broken. Place and place? topping off B tier, we have the Neuroptera, Never seen a one. rather clumsy build with some pretty pathetic looking is. base stats. Genuinely one of the least agile flyers in the entire game. 
However, looking oh, wait, at the final this form fly? of this build paints a highly misleading no. picture of its capabilities. The larval Similar. form, which is the form they spend the vast, vast majority of their time as, is a brutally effective predator build for any player who prefers the camping playstyle. Taking a look at the larva's stats, we see that they have incredibly high power and stealth for their size. Antlions have a devastating, venomous bite, which they use to one-shot unsuspecting Mets players is casually before draining all their life points with their hollow jaws. Because of their ability to construct pitfall traps, their passive stealth rating is extremely high, making their ambush playstyle unbelievably effective. As if escape wasn't hard enough, once the player gets caught in their trap, the antlion even has the ability to launch projectiles to stun its target, making That's escape crazy. a near impossibility. Oh, I have an entire Jesus video dedicated Christ. to the overpowered he abilities thought. of Neuropteran larvae, but in short, that they are what wild. the earwig pretends to be. If you took the earwig Cersei, put them in front, and made them sharper and gave them deadly venom to boot, you'd have oh an antlion. Oh my ant god, oh my god. So why the weak adult form? <laughs> Having spent all their evolution points optimizing their larval form, they spend hardly any time at all as adults. They don't even have the ability to eat in this form, and really only exist to be a vessel that allows players to find okay. each other and complete the mating questline. Something they lack the ability to do in their much less mobile larval form. So, while I do think it'd be more impressive if they didn't take such a massive cut to their power level during their final level up, there's no denying that for the vast majority of their playtime, these builds are an absolute menace to encounter. Okay, my well, man. Oh, at the bottom of A tier, we have a personal favorite of mine. The yeah, those are oh crazy. My oh my. Mantises have a fairly straightforward playstyle consisting of slash. What? Wait a minute. The... What? The what? That's the first time I saw a fly. Wait, does that mean flies are higher or? <laughs> oh yeah, you. Yeah, you know what? God dang. Well, oh, flies had no. Sur I have no idea. I have no idea, but. Hey, but he just clapped the fly. Yeah, he clapped the fly. Birdman just claps a lot. True. But maybe there's something wrong. Let's see. Pushing and grabbing their targets using powerful spiked raptorial forelimbs. If we take a look at the Mantis' stats, we see that the Mantis has one of the highest base power stats of any non-venomous insect. It also has a stealth stat similar to that of a walking stick. I'll feel bad for the tiny one. it needs in order to be able to get within striking range of its targets. I forgot the name of the tiny one. Its clumsy flight and slow ground movement speed makes chasing prey basically impossible. However, what they lack in movement speed, they easily make up for with strike speed. The Mantis' strike is lightning quick, to the point that it's easily able to oh, that are normally considered hopelessly evasive. Jesus. As powerful as these strikes are, one weakness of the is that the grappling attack yeah. doesn't immobilize Whatever, the so. target, and actually brings them within range of a counterattack. And while the Mantis' oh, large size enables it to tank most counterattacks, oh, attacking the, the venomous hornet. target can end up being a serious nice. blunder for a Mantis player. So definitely a powerful high tier predator, but not one that's so invincible I that Mantis clapped. mains can get Dude, those, the Jap Flies. Truth, flies. In here we have the flies. Look this does get a bit confusing to the amount of other builds though. that use the word fly in their name. But this group, the true flies, are defined by a very specific feature. True flies only have two wings. This might seem like a major trade-off, but while it does leave them more vulnerable to having their flight ability disabled from taking damage, the perk they unlock in return they is more than everything. worth the risk. Yeah. Instead of a second pair of wings, flies swap them out for halteers, a sensory structure that grants flies an insanely powerful buff to their aerial maneuverability and their evasion. Their superior aerobatics make them all but impossible to land a hit on midair, and yeah, also I enables predator fly, fly variants fly. such as the robber fly to launch incredibly precise attacks mid-flight and <laughs> take down targets that would normally be too powerful oh to confront head on, kill. but are unable oh, man, to killing the bee. during flight. No. However, most flies are either scavengers or parasites, you don't want to see the using their the quick mobility and superior reaction fly. speed oh, yeah. to weave past the defenses and avoid the sweeping counterattacks of larger players. While they do have an extremely short lifespan, there's yeah, no denying Flamingos, that they make the man. most of the time they do have, and no, are one of the no, most no. efficient and evasive builds in the entire game. But oh, man, while flies are excellent aerial combatants, <laughs> no. they're no match for the ultimate aerial hunter build. The dragonfly. dragonfly. The dragonfly is similar to the crocodile in that it is one of the most well-optimized PvP builds that has ever existed in the game. It's already such an efficient build that down. across several balance patches and game expansions, the dragonfly has seen very few changes to its core strategy. They Doinkies. simply aren't necessary, as the dragonfly is already equipped to deal with just about anything the devs throw at it. 
So what is it about Dragonfly that is given <laughs> Wind pressure feels edge? bad. Dragonflies have the best aerial maneuverability of any build in the game, ducks, and the us. highest top flight speed so of any insect. This? What the hell is this? Unlike most insects, dragonflies have specced into the ability to move their wings independently this? of each other, Wait, which me. grants them the ability to move the in fuck? any direction like, without needing to you? turn and face that direction. Meaning they can strafe mid-flight and even away from <laughs> This ability <laughs> makes their flight more energetically demanding than it is for other insects. That dragonfly so was So this cocky. is a high commitment, high reward place yeah, to that is cocky. to ensure a proper payoff for their incredible agility. Dragonflies, dragonflies have also specced into what is arguably the yeah, best vision cool. of any arthropod. Extremely large, high-resolution eyes that take up basically their entire. Oh my God! Game. It's 4K. Full 360 oh degree vision. 4K. This uh, allows 8K, them to track dude. all potential targets 8K. around them with ease, and allows them to see attacks coming long before they're actually at risk of getting hit. <laughs> Unlike many of the other builds <laughs> on this list, try, which bro. either have a powerful larval form but a weak <laughs> adult form, or a powerful adult form that can only achieve this after enduring an extremely vulnerable early game, the dragonfly is a high-tier predator oh in God. both forms. While everyone knows they dominate the skies when they reach their max level, what you might not know is that as nymphs, dragonflies are one of the most vicious aquatic builds in the game, able to one-shot similarly sized fish and aquatic amphibian build. players. Now, while it was yeah, tempting to put pool. dragonflies in S tier, they do have a few shortcomings. Yeah, oh, while they are bad. generally Dying able to bird. see approaching predators before it's too late, they aren't particularly Rip. good at avoiding accidentally flying into death. dangerous situations. They are easily trapped by spiderwebs and are often snatched out of the air when flying too close to another player. In addition, <laughs> dragonflies crazy, cannot man. walk, meaning that their energy expensive flight ability is their only option if they need to reposition themselves. <laughs> Not that devastating of a weakness, I didn't know but that it's enough that this really ancient walk. build That's can't awesome. quite break into uh, S tier. What's S tier? So it's gonna be beetles, First in S tier we have the beetle. and beetles. The beetle is yeah. the epitome of the insect build. A bunch of extraordinarily mm. powerful abilities that seem like they shouldn't really function properly when used these? in conjunction with each other. No, yet right. somehow there, actually bro. end up synergizing unbelievably They're a well. Myth. What? Beetles are Wait, so <laughs> damn it, Zeus! What did you just say to me? Bees and wasps are myths. <sighs> what? <laughs> what does that mean? Yeah, what's that? Mean? What the f does that mean? You're telling me they're you fake. You don't believe in bees. They don't exist. You're actually crazy. That's, You're actually crazy. What crazy. the balls, dude? <laughs> Damn. It feel, feels bad for my flowers. These are a myth. <laughs> They're not getting pollinated. Jesus, oh. dude. F my flowers, dude. <laughs> Wait, you feel bad for the followers for not being pollinated? They're effing real, yeah, my guy. We need my damn flowers, bro. <laughs> I need my honey too. I'll just... No, this th this is what's real. The government. No, I'm kidding. Oh, I gotta, the I gotta, government pollinates the flowers. The government is just saying bees are real, bro. Yeah. The government go over the flowers and they pollinate. I'm gonna punch you. <laughs> the premier <laughs> tanks of the insect faction, with an outer cuticle sturdy enough to deflect just about any attack with ease. It has such a high AC that it can confidently plow through a swarm of aggressive you, ants without taking any <laughs> damage. <laughs> Something that even many reptiles and amphibians can't get away with. Now, typically, when a build is heavily Dude, invested into God defenses like this, it has to make a lot of sacrifices right. in its other stats. This is the opposite of what we see in the beetle build, as in addition to being the most heavily armored insect in the game, it also excels are those in the, the, are those metrics, the ones that turn green later? The most obvious of which yeah. is its power stats. Beetles can those obliterate like their enemies the in combat using powerful jaws and explosive chemical weapons. Their ability to wow. bulldoze opponents with their oh, damn, oh, damn. He's big. Oh, shit. Oh, oh, oh. But in my opinion, their real Man, damage potential comes from beetles up. which possess the ability yeah, to see, pass their attackers with you, a toxic Tony. or acidic oh, chemical God. burst. But that's <laughs> not where the craziness dice. stops, because although you'd probably expect a high-power tank to be a slow, lumbering build, beetles also possess the top terrestrial movement speed of any insect. And if that weren't enough, Despite often having heavy horns or giant mandibles, packing a tank full of noxious chemicals, being clad in heavy armor, and strapped with enough muscle to move far, yeah. far, far above their weight class, the, dung beetle. the beetle is still able to fly without much issue. <laughs> now, they did sacrifice one of their sets of wings for additional armor, so they can't perform the advanced aerobatics yeah. that dragonflies and houseflies can. But the ability to get from point A to point Beatles B via flight cool, is dude. still extremely Beatles valuable, cool, both for escaping danger and for reaching valuable points of interest. In short, beetles have essentially every ability they could ask for. <laughs> well, dude. They are an amalgamation of everything well, that makes oh, the insect dude, faction so powerful. And so it's no surprise that beetle species oh, comprise yeah. a whopping 25% of all species in the game. 
they're so versatile and adaptable that a beetle player can find a niche in essentially any server. They truly are the ultimate insect and deserve a tier list of their own. As incredible as this combination of powerful oh, abilities is, ultimately the beetle is still lacking the most Come on, come on, don't let the little one punk all, you. Yeah, sociality. Now I, I have an entire video girl, dedicated to explaining just how broken this ability is, and there's no question that the insects that incorporate it into their game plan simply dominate all in their path. Okay, termites. Now, okay. termites are I a can agree with this. Cockroach build. But they have such a unique and powerful playstyle that lumping oh, them in I with mid tier cockroaches seems disingenuous. The termite queen is oh, the yeah. longest lived insect in the game, Ew. with a lifespan near that of a human or elephant. And it spends these many decades Wait, building bro, one of the most powerful sexy. armies the game has ever seen. I don't like These termites. termite armies are able to construct some of the most well fortified bases in the game. Giving even nutty. beaver dams and human skyscrapers a run They're for their money. They Not only do high. they build incredible bases, but they literally transform the map in order to better optimize their colony's that ability to gather resources. That, they will pave paths and build ramps and bridges to important resource deposits. The this efficiency they allows break them to our support houses. a huge army and command <laughs> they vast eat our Termites, the termites despite being wild. Termites, closely related to cockroaches, have a combat style that is actually most similar to the spitting cobra, which, if you've seen my snake tier list, you'd know is also a top tier build. Termites can accurately fire acid from a needle-like well, hole on their face, I didn't know that. dealing heavy damage to anything that. caught in its blast. Some termites opt for giant slicing jaws well, instead of acid on his forehead. On and are crucial for defending their base from an onslaught of invaders. Termites are a somewhat imbalanced build, with crazy powerful forward-facing weaponry, but extremely vulnerable abdomens with no armor at all. Clap them up. This means that oftentimes, despite a larger size, they are quickly overwhelmed if they get outnumbered and flanked. Oh, Not body, usually bro. an issue, as termites are proficient at defending in a phalanx formation which covers the weak points of individual members. Again, so bro, certainly not a bad enough weakness to negate the top tier status of eusociality. But this weakness does mean that I gotta give the top spot to the other eusocial insect faction. Oh? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, ants, bees, and wasps. Insects that includes ants, right. bees, and wasps. Unlike termites, these insects are a bit more well-rounded having decent armor all over, and tend to have both forward and oh rear facing gosh. weaponry, with most Hymenopterans packing strong oh, jaws no, and a venomous like that. The wasp's signature buzz and yellow banding are so infamous that almost every other insect faction in the game has at least a few members trying to replicate it to gain advantage on their own intimidation checks. The, oh my God. New social Hymenopterans build fear. extremely <laughs> complicated structures without the use of tools. They can launch organized attacks containing thousands of combatants. Oh, prisoners, oh cross major barriers the and control crack. territory to an absolutely incredible degree. They really are. Thousands of players will lay down their lives in defense of a colony if need be. Ants in particular are huh. masters of both empire building and military oh. tactics, often having to wage war on multiple fronts while undertaking large construction and agricultural projects in yeah, their own they're territory. Over here playing a strategy so, game. while beetles may take up a larger percentage of total insect variants, termites and ants I mean, an both ant vastly outnumber RPG, any other insect crazy. build. And while I don't base my tier lists purely off of population, there's no denying that the abundance of these insects is due to their incredibly powerful strategies and their ability to bend their environment to their advantage. Yes, the only genuine it's threats to you social players tend to be invaders crazy, disguising right? themselves as members of their own colony, oh. Oh. but are really there to disrupt, steal, and attack. Many spider, hemiptera, and mantis mains adopt the strategy and are incredibly successful in doing so. As the ant troops forage and browse unknown territory, the parasites Man, weave their way into their ranks. Something similar happens when you browse the internet without using NordVPN, oh, yeah. the sponsor oh, of today's video. Yeah. As you browse, trackers latch God onto dang. your system and follow you from one place to us another, there. stealing dead. your vulnerable private data, just like ant mimicking spiders steal vulnerable worker ants the moment their backs are turned. NordVPN's new threat protection feature can watch your back, making sure you aren't being followed, blocking malicious websites, malware, trackers, and intrusive ads from preying upon your browsing session. This is a new feature that that NordVPN added this, this year to their service. Jeez so even if you've heard of Nord before, which I'm sure you have me. if you watch YouTube, right. yeah. you may not have noticed that they're constantly evolving to keep up with the meta of internet security. This is, of course, in addition to the normal benefits of having a good VPN, yeah. such as being able to access region-locked content on streaming services or access region-specific pricing. Go to nordvpn.com slash tearsu to get a two-year plan plus four <laughs> additional months with a huge discount. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee, 
So if it's not right for you, nothing lost. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. I lost video. everything. Thanks especially to my patrons Me on too. Patreon. And until next time, good luck out there. Oh, that was, okay, okay. That was that. Okay, that was that. Uh, did you like the videos you see? Uh, there were some things I didn't know, like the all right, that like the termite. Yeah. Oh yeah, almost how like bees are myths. Bees are myths. <laughs> well, yeah. What are you talking That's about? What I learned. Oh yeah. They, I learned that. They don't exist. They really don't. They really. But well, hey, guys, look. If you want to see any more of these tears of videos, we'd really probably like to check them out. I mean, <laughs> seems really cool. Very interesting. And, oh yeah, uh, they're definitely interesting. Yeah. But if there's any other types of videos you want us to react to, let us know down in the comments, and uh, let us know what uh, what insect you want on your team. All right. <laughs> we've been the we, we've been the Cranky Films channel. All right. If you want to see gaming videos, we we have a gaming channel called Cranky Boys, and uh, you know what? You know what? Hey, Jay Cranky. <laughs>